Hello guys, today I want to go over a pretty interesting topic in calculus, and that is what is E equal to, okay? So there are many ways in which you can define E, but one of them is taking this limit. So this limit is pretty common, you have probably seen it. By now, if you're studying calculus, you have probably seen it. And this limit, it is kind of hard to compute, because, well, there's really nothing you can do uh, to find how much this is. This is basically 1 to the infinite power, okay? But it's, well, you cannot exactly find any number for that. But there is something pretty cool um, that has to do with kind of algebra and calculus at the same time so that you can find this limit. And it is pretty cool. So that is what I want to show you today, okay? So let's begin. Now, what I want to do first is we have this limit. And we're going to let this limit be equal to y, okay? So that we have a variable that we can play later on with, okay? Now, what I want to do is the following. I'm going to say that the natural log of y, ln y, is going to be equal to... Now, here's an important property that you need to know. I'm not going to prove it, but just take, in, take into account this. When you say that you have the limit as x approaches any number c of the natural log of f of x, this is equal to taking the natural log outside the limit, okay? So this is a property that is very important and that we're about to use. This is basically the log of the limit equals the limit of the log, okay? The limit of the log equals the log of the limit, okay? This is a very important property that we're about to use here. So if we know that y equals the limit, then we know that ln y would be equal to the natural log of this limit. And by this property, we know that that would be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log. So you can put ln inside the limit of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power, okay? And now, well, you know that this would be equal to the limit. Oh, let me write that again. If I, write, if I keep writing like that, it's going to be too small and you won't be able to see. Uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of n, there is a property of logs that is basically uh, log of xn is equal to n times log x, okay? That is a property that we just used. So we can you can move this n to the front and you're going to have n times natural log of 1 plus 1 over n, okay? So this is the limit that you have. Now, what you want to do is the following. You want to find somehow, this is where things might get a bit tricky. If you, have seen some, if you have seen some other proofs before, you know that there is something tricky that they do with the derivative of natural log, and here's where we're going to do that. So basically, when you have this form, something that you want to be able to do is to put, to put this expression as a derivative, or to write it as a derivative. And something you can do is the following. You can say that uh, you want to... So I'm going to a period right there to indicate that we're going to start like a different idea. So we're going to say that let delta x, I'm going to use that notation, delta x be equal to 1 over n, okay? Now that would imply that n is equal to uh, 1 over delta x. So now since we defined this new variable in terms of n, now we can replace uh, n by delta x in this limit, okay? So let's do that. Uh, we're, we know that this would be equal to, I'm going to continue over here, this would be equal to, once again, the limit. And now there is something interesting uh, here. As n tends to infinity, so I'm going to do that over here. So as n approaches infinity, you can see that in this equation, n would be a very big number, and, a, and delta x would be almost equal to zero, okay? So if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of delta x, well, we know that delta x would approach uh, zero, okay? So from that relation or from that idea, you can, you can say that this limit using n as our variable is going to be equal to the limit as delta x approaches zero, okay? Because as n grows bigger and bigger, well, you can see that delta x is going to become smaller and smaller, okay? Because 1 over a very, a very small, a very big number, I'm sorry, is going to give you a very small number, okay? So this is the idea that we're using to change the notation from n to delta x. So now we have delta x as our variable, so we want to change n for delta x. Now we know n would be equal to 1 over x, so we're going to write that. So we have 1 over delta x times a natural log of 1 plus 1 over delta and uh, 1 over a, n, which is equal to delta x. Okay? So now this is the limit that we have. And now here's where things get pretty interesting. You can write this as the limit as n approaches infinity for uh, ln of 
1 plus delta x, I'm sorry, and this should not be n approaches infinity, although it would be the same, now we just use the uh, delta x notation. So delta x approaches 0 for a natural log of 1 plus delta x. And now here's where you can put this as a derivative. So you can write the following. You can say ln minus ln uh, 1, I'm sorry. So minus ln 1. And remember that ln 1 is basically saying uh, there is a number x such that e to the x is equal to 1. You know that x has to be equal to 0 so that you can get 1. And x would be equal to ln 1 in this case. So you know that ln 1 would be equal to 0, okay? So in this case, if you subtract ln 1 from this expression, you're not doing anything to the original uh, expression that you had because it is 0, okay? You're basically subtracting 0, so you didn't change anything at all. And you know that this entire thing would be divided by delta x, okay? And now I believe you can see the resemblance uh, with a derivative, with the definition of a derivative um, with this limit, okay? You have basically a variable, that variable is going to 0, and this is basically the derivative for, now I'm going to use uh, Leibniz's notation, so this is basically the derivative with respect to x for ln x evaluated at x equals 1, okay? This is what this limit is equal to. So now you, we can find the derivative of ln x and then evaluate it at x equals 1. And it is pretty simple, I believe, that you already know that that would be equal to uh, 1 over uh, 1 over uh, 1 over x times, well, no, not times anything because well, we, we, we're not using the general, but it would be 1 over x uh, evaluated at x equals 1, and you know that would just simply be 1, okay? You have 1 over 1, that's 1. So from all these equations, we know that we started from, uh, we started from, uh, from here. So we know that ln y is equal to all these expressions, and we got to a final expression, and is that to a final equation, and is that, and that one, and that, that, that equation tells us that ln y is equal to 1, okay? So we can now write that as ln y is equal to 1, and if you want to find how much y is, remember, if you find y, you also find this limit, so you can, uh, there is also a property of logarithms, uh, which basically goes that, I'm going to write it over here, a to the log base a of x is equal to x, okay? So if you have a to the log base a, or if you have any number to the log base, any number x, you're going to get x back. So what you can use that property for is the following. You can say that, well, this equation, you want to do a, uh, you want to do e to the ln y is equal to e to the first power, so that you can cancel out ln and e, and you're going to get that y is equal to e, okay? And, well, you also know that y is equal to the initial limit that we had. The limit as n approaches infinity for 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power, okay? And this is basically the entire proof or uh, the entire problem that we wanted to solve, okay? We wanted to find how much this limit is. We wanted to compute it. And, well, we did that, okay? The only thing that you need to know is that you can introduce new variables into a problem. You can use delta x as a, you know, as some sort of guidance or as, you know, like as a tool to see things in a more in a more compact way because if you have this, you can also write this part, which is the derivative, as ln 1 plus 1 over n over uh, minus ln 1 over 1 over n. And you can say that, well, what happens as n approaches infinity, it would be exactly the same idea and the same mathematical notion or meaning as delta x approaches zero in this expression, but it is, it is, I think it is easier to see it as delta x instead of one over n, okay, just for the sake of, uh, you know, notation, I think it would be easier. So the key ideas that you need to know when computing this limit is that you can introduce new variables like delta x, and well, you need to be creative and find somehow any sort of way in which you can turn this expression into a derivative, and one way is by subtracting ln one, which we know is equal to zero, and that is basically the derivative of ln x evaluated at x equals 1, okay? And then that is just going to give you ln, equal, ln y equals 1, and then you can do um, e to the these values, and then you can get that y equals e, and we know that y equals this limit, so e equals that limit, okay? So it is pretty simple if you know what you're doing. It is also pretty cool to see, um, you know, these types of problems. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, you learned something, and see you in the following one. Bye!